Welcome back to WNYAthletics.com. We're going to get right into it with the Class Double A's. And, Dick, there were really two awesome games, if you ask me, from Double A this past week. Uh, the first one was at Orchard Park, uh, taking on Lancaster last week at Foyle Cling Field with the Quakers coming out 21-20 winners in that game. Uh, you watched it, I'm sure, on Spectrum. I was there for the first few quarters of that game, and that was an impressive game. Two teams that just really never gave up, and it was a slugfest. Well, you know, when you look at it in the third quarter, Lancaster's up 20-7 to and have, has all the momentum, and then they wind up turning it over when uh, Tyler, I think it, it Perini, uh, intercepted a pass for a touchdown, and then all the momentum went to the Quakers. And the next series for Lancaster, they got down to the five-yard line, and then they fumbled. It was like an accident waiting to happen in the second half for the Lancers. But you got to give credit to the Quakers, particularly playing that game without their star linebacker, one of the top defenders in Western New York, in Mike Pataki. That was tough to watch Mike go out. Um, as early as he did, and you could tell that he was emotional and he wanted to get back in the game more than anything. They had to take the kid's helmet away. Um, you know, I, I, a lot of respect to that Orchard Park staff for keeping him off. Um, you know, he's the best player on the field maybe uh, between the two teams collectively. He, you can argue that he is. Um, but, you know, he was out early, went to the bench, very upset, um, you could tell he wanted to get back into the game, but he did the next best thing. Instead of sulking and and just disengaging from the game itself, you know, I saw him get up and walk over to the 50-yard line and become the best cheerleader. And, you know, that to me that's a different Mike Pataki. I don't know if he does that last year, uh, but he did that this year. He grew up a lot this off season, and I'll tell you, I admire the kid for – for doing that, um, it speaks highly about him and how much he loves uh, his teammates. And he did the next best thing that he could have done, and that became a great cheerleader for his teammates. And he's also an outstanding wrestler and one of the best in the state. Won a sectional championship this past year. We'll be competing for a state title this year. So you take a look at it. He's one of the top athletes and really comes to play. And it was sad to see him knocked out. I think it was the second play of the game. But when you take a look at his intensity and love for the game and the team, he'll be back playing. So Tyler Piritano is the guy you mentioned earlier with the uh, with the interception uh, return for the touchdown. That really changed the momentum. Cross Rapini also had an interception for Orchard Park. So their defense really came to play in that second half and changed things around. They Orchard Park could have folded their tents, but you know Craig, Dana, and uh, uh, Chuck Sen, they weren't going to allow that to happen. Um, they must have given them a great halftime speech because they came out and they were the better team in the second half. Well, in Lancaster, his last two games, both by a point, one to Clarence and one to Orchard Park. And I think when you take a look at the double A and you have eight teams making the playoffs, those, those, that seeding for the playoffs is going to be very interesting because Jamestown or Orchard Park is going to be the number one seed, whoever loses that game will be the number two. You could potentially have a matchup in the quarterfinals of Bennett at Lancaster, which would be one heck of a quarterfinal game. But the competition in AA this year has been very good, with the exception of the few teams, Hutch Tech, Frontier, excuse me, and uh, Lockport. So Bennett gets past Frontier 66-14, to and then Lockport, uh, they fall to 0-6 with a 58-17 loss against Clarence. Another game that we had talked a little bit about last week was Niagara Falls hosting Jamestown. Um, people up here that hadn't seen Jamestown, and they had opportunities, of course, to see them play earlier in the year with Bennett and I believe with Clarence. Well, if you were sleeping on Jamestown, you definitely had your opportunity on Saturday, and they did. Uh, they played great uh, against Niagara Falls. They moved to 5-1. 39-24 winners over the Wolverines. Uh, prayers out to that athlete, uh, Niagara Falls, who left that game. Uh, that was an, a scene, to, a, a scary scene for sure. It was nice to see all those players, though, Jamestown and Niagara Falls, get around the kid and say some prayers and 
and show some good sportsmanship. So kudos to the coaches for uh, for doing that. Um, but what what was your take on the Jamestown game? Well, the, the Wolverines were up in the first quarter over Jamestown, but then Jamestown came back. And if you looked at Goldsmith, the quarterback for Niagara Falls, he's an excellent athlete, and that I think was Zion Page that you know was an outstanding wide receiver. So the Wolverines competed, but when you look at Jamestown overall team, at all three areas, defense, offense, and special teams, they've got the kicker, they got a freshman quarterback, they got a junior stud running back, and they got some uh, Patera, and he's only a sophomore, and he excels on both sides of the ball. So the game next week with at Jamestown with Ocha Park is going to be a huge, and you wonder, given all the hype and publicity related to the game this past weekend with the Legends and the Quakers, as to whether the Quakers are going to be ready to play another high-intensity game. And I'm sure you mentioned Craig Daniel will have them ready. My takeaway, I guess, from Jamestown is that heading into the season, I didn't know much about them other than Savan Van Sickle. And if you were to tell me that three weeks ago, four weeks ago, that they were going to be in this position today, I probably would have doubted you. I didn't think they would be much better than a 500 team, if that. But it's nice that they do have these other weapons, so it's not Savan doing everything. They can lean on this freshman quarterback to make plays. And someone told me that was at the game said that Butera might have been the best player on the field Saturday. And I didn't know much about them heading into the season. So for the Red Raiders um, and the rest of Double A, you're kidding yourselves if you, you know, they will surprise you, but they shouldn't. You need to take this team seriously. I think Orchard Park will have their hands full on Friday. So that's the big game, if you ask me. Orchard Park and Jamestown down at Strider. We will have an audio broadcast. I'm heading down for that game. Uh, Niagara Falls Bennett is another big game because there's a lot of playmakers. On both sides, um, Niagara Falls at four and two, Bennett at three and three. Bennett needs that game badly if they are going to get a home playoff game. Um, so they need that win more than anything. We'll have to see how that plays out. What do you? What are your thoughts on Niagara Falls Bennett? Well, that'll be smash mouth football at its best. And one of the things that uh, people have overlooked is Justin Smith was a stud for the Tigers last year, and along with the Jay Perry. They had the outstanding running back duo. This year he didn't play in a number of games for whatever reason. I don't know, but if you look at the Frontier game, he scored a couple of touchdowns, made his difference, and he is a difference maker if he's playing. So That's Justin Campbell. Justin, Justin Campbell. Campbell. Yes. Yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a f- huge factor. If he, you take him out of the game, Bennett's not the same team. You put him in the game, Justin Campbell, Bennett's – if you ask me, one of the teams to beat. They're tough to hang with. And he's the cousin of Malik Campbell, who won a Conley Cup years ago, as well as being one of the top athletes and winding up playing basketball and football at Syracuse. And uh, he was at the Canisius St. Joe's game, and he never changes, but he was looking and trying just to have a positive impact and just to get him back playing, which he did. The other game on Saturday with AA is uh, Clarence and Hodge Tech. That's a 4-2 versus a 1-5 matchup, and I'm not sure what to make of. We're still not sure what's going on at Hodge Tech. I know that their game with South Park didn't end well, and it ended prematurely after the third quarter. So um, Hodge Tech has got uh, – they've got issues, man. They <laughs> Clarence, 4-2, and two, they're pl- playing good football. You know, I know they had one, maybe one hiccup after Lancaster, uh, but they've been playing pretty sound in Zach Norton's back, and he's one of the best in Western New York. Very powerful running back. So that'll be a good game, maybe. Um, Depew Lancaster, the 100th uh, year of those two teams. Uh, I know they took some years off, maybe in the 30s. They weren't playing nice, so they suspended that game for a while. And, but they're back, and they're I think this is their 93rd meeting. I, I won't go to that game. I'm going to miss it. But uh, you've been to a number of Lancaster to Pew games. Just talk about that atmosphere. Well, the atmosphere is fantastic, and it's for bragging rights. And a lot of those people stay there in their respective communities for the rest of their life. And if they win that game, they're happy. But when you take a look at it, 
the pew really when you you know they have what 700 kids in the school and Lancaster's got 1500 they have 30 on their team 28 Lancaster's got 48 so you look at the depth but the the pew surprised this year and PJ Burns outstanding wide receiver safety and if you look at uh, the rest of the team they they'll, they'll be competitive but I just don't think they match up particularly on the defensive side of the ball. Yep. Well, that's going to do it for Class AA. We'll be back in just a few minutes to get into the Class A1 and A2. Divisions. Welcome back to WNY Athletics. Before we get into Class A, Dick, I just want to talk a little bit about the playoff scenarios for AA. So we mentioned this OP Jamestown, pretty big game Friday night down at Strider. Well, that's for the one seed overall for AA. So the winner takes the top seed, and for Jamestown, that could be huge. Can you imagine if all these teams have to go down and play their first game at Jamestown? Or, you know, or their second game yeah, at second, Jamestown. Exactly. Um, so that's that's tough going for any team to have to make that two-hour trip. I mean, they make the trip up here. It's nothing to them, but you know, for, for a Niagara Falls team to have to go down there or Bennett, that's, a lot can go wrong in that two-hour uh, bus ride. So that that will determine who the one seed is. The loser will be the number two seed. Um, Lockport's definitely the nine, so they're going to get a weak eight matchup. Frontier will be the eight, and they're going to go down to the one seed, whether it's Orchard Park. That would be a pretty cool game, Orchard Park, Frontier. They're in the backyard. Um, or Frontier will see Jamestown. Hutch Tech is the seven, and they're going to go play that two seed. Seeds three through six are going to be decided after this weekend. So that's the double-A uh, playoff scenarios after week seven.